In this video, we're gonna see about heparin. Heparin is a anticoagulant. It basically prevents the coagulation of blood. So in patients who are at more risk of developing blood clots or coagulation uh, anywhere in their body, um, heparin is a drug or we can tell it the other way. Heparin is a life savior in those cases. Heparin can go to that side and then it can prevent the coagulation. By doing so, um, heparin can save the life of the patient. So heparin is an anticoagulant which prevents coagulation of blood. Heparin is an indirect thrombin inhibitor. Why is it called so? So this is basically to deal with the mechanism of action of heparin, which I will be talking about in the next slide. Heparin binds to something known as antithrombin 3 and these two uh, together form a complex which inhibits the clotting factors thrombin, uh, clotting factor 10A and clotting factor 9A. So as you can see here, heparin doesn't go straight to thrombin and inhibit it, whereas it binds to ant antithrombin 3 and then these two together inhibit thrombin. That's why it is known as indirect thrombin inhibitor check. So there are various types of heparin. This includes unfractioned heparin which is also known as high molecular weight heparin, low molecular weight heparin and fondaparin X. Fondaparin X is basically a synthetic heparin. So now let's see about the advantages of low molecular weight heparins over unfractioned or high molecular weight heparins. Low molecular weight heparins are relatively safer compared to uh, unfractioned heparins. And the bioavailability of low molecular weight heparins is more compared to high molecular weight heparins. Um, due to various factors such as increased half-life and all that, low molecular weight heparins need not be administered uh, so many times compared to high molecular weight heparins. And one more uh, difference between these two is that uh, high molecular weight heparins uh, require frequent monitoring of the drug in the patient or white side effects, whereas low molecular weight heparins need not be monitored in patients so frequently except in few cases such as in pregnant women and uh, patients with uh, liver disease, etc. So these are a few uh, low molecular weight heparins. So this includes enoxaparin and deltaparin. So it's so easy to remember these two drugs. As you can see here, the last five letters in these two drugs are P-A-R-I-N, which is parin, which is derived from heparin. That makes our life easier here. Nice. So now let's come to the toxicity part. So it's so... Um, easy to remember the uh, toxicity of heparin uh, because heparin inhibits the uh, coagulation in the patient and when that goes out of control the patient can bleed so much so that the patient can even bleed to death so everything needs to be in control when you treat a patient with heparin and you need to carefully select a patient when you're gonna give heparin to that patient um, Another side effect with heparin is alopecia and this is not so common but still it can happen in few patients. Alopecia is nothing but hair loss. When you give heparin to a patient for a long period, hair loss can occur. Uh, another most common uh, side effect of heparin when you give the patient with heparin on a long term is osteoporosis. This is nothing but weakening of bones. So if you have osteoporosis, you need to be more careful. And if you fall, even minute uh, trauma can lead to significant fractures. So now let's, go, uh, now let's uh, discuss about one of the um, very important adverse effects of heparin. However, this is not so common, but still it's very important to know. It is known as heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, HIT in short. So what do we give heparin basically in the first place? Heparin is given to control the hypercoagulable state of the patient. But in a few patients what happens is the contrary thing happens. 
the patient will start to develop systemic hypercoagulable state which means the patient will start to develop venous thrombi all over the body if not so at least in the uh, veins in the distal uh, distal extremities such as uh, near the feet and all that so in few extreme cases even skin necrosis can occur so you need to consider this adverse effect when you treat a patient with heparin so how do you manage heparin induced thrombocytopenia basically you stop you stop giving heparin further and then you need to give a direct thrombin inhibitor so in this video i'm not going to tell anything about direct thrombin inhibitor because i need i'll be making a separate video on that uh, very soon so stay tuned for that so there are a few conditions where you can give heparin to the patient so there are obviously few contraindications and these includes heparin induced thrombocytopenia acute bleeding severe hypertension and hypersensitivity to heparin there is a massive list uh, of contraindications uh, to give uh, uh, contraindications to giving heparin but i've just taken the four most important things out of those and these four are the main contraindications to heparin if you're going to give heparin to the patient with any of these things what happens is uh, the bleeding will get worsen and you're going to increase the mortality of that patient due to severe bleeding so there we go we came to the end of the video hope you learned something new today if you like this video help me make more videos by donating me on www.patreon.com slash med which made simple the link is in the description of this video and as usual like share and subscribe to my channel thank you